Hello and welcome to Nursing 7060, Nursing Education with a focus on classroom teaching. In this course, you will have the opportunity to develop further competence in the role of the nurse educator with a focus on classroom teaching. You will use concepts from prerequisite education courses and critically evaluate knowledge and theory from nursing and other disciplines for relevance to nursing education. With the guidance of an expert preceptor, you will apply educational theory and best practice to discipline-specific teaching situations. I look forward to working with you to facilitate your learning in this course. As a way to introduce myself to you, I want to share a bit about my own philosophy of nursing education. The work of Kathy Gaberson, Marilyn Orman, Diane Billings, and Judith Halstead have provided a framework for my understanding of how to become a nurse educator you will no doubt notice that they are the authors of the textbooks I have selected. I return again and again to what they have written and said to clarify and confirm what I am doing as an educator. Patricia Benners, from novice to expert, and more recently her Educating Nurses, a call for the radical transformation, have been sparks for my own reflections on how and why educational environments affect the learning process. Better's work and the work of others have shown a light on the need for effective educational practices that are relevant. I am committed to participating in developing teaching learning environments that meet the needs of today's diverse learners, to facilitate their preparation for roles in the complex healthcare systems of today, and to provide them with a strong foundation upon which to build future knowledge, skills, and attitudes. I have had the pleasure of educating many nurses and nurse educators in my professional career. This cartoon reminds me that some of them say to me, you never taught me about this, or you never taught me about that. And of course, your education as a nurse educator will not be complete when you finish the course or even this graduate program. You will have developed valuable knowledge and skills, but will continue to learn as you practice just like you did as a nurse. So what has been covered and what will we use in this course to build upon? Things that you have learned previously. How do people learn? Is it a psychological process, a social process? What about active engagement? How do you plan and deliver a lesson? and what are appropriate teaching formats for both the learner and the content? How do you measure the outcomes from both the learner and the quality of the lessons? All of these are topics that you have covered in previous classes, such as the theory of learning, curriculum development and assessment, statistics, and other courses in the MSN program. In this course, we will use what you have learned and help you to build on that foundation. So find the material from those courses and have it accessible for this next step. What will be covered in this course? If you haven't done so already, please read the syllabus carefully. It will provide you with an overview of the course, provide you with objectives and assignments. The objectives guide the content that has been included and the assignments that were selected to demonstrate your achievement of those objectives. More details about the assignments, guidelines, and scoring rubrics for, in particular are available in the Blackboard site, but remember to ask questions if something isn't clear. As developing educators, you should be looking at the syllabus and the materials for this course and all of your courses with new eyes. You certainly now have a much better idea of how much planning goes into creating teaching and learning environments that the details of content structure and teaching learning environments are complex and linked together. Some say that teachers are born. Certainly a passion for teaching is important, but passion alone won't make you a great teacher. 
There are skills that you need to learn and develop. This is like saying that nurses are born. Certainly you decided to be a nurse because the profession appealed to you, but you know that there was a great deal that you had to learn both as part of your formal education and then in the actual practice as a nurse. The same is true for you as a nurse educator, and you are well on your way to developing those preliminary skills. The first line in this slide is the course objective. The bulleted objectives are weekly objectives that are linked to the course objectives. These will provide guidance for the entire week's content and activities. This will include the presentation, the course materials, and the assignments. For this week, the discussion board, the introduction of the ePortfolio, and your practicum activities. There are guidelines and rubrics in the Blackboard site to help you with the details. Another important aspect of your development as a nurse educator is your understanding of the changing healthcare environment. As a nurse and a nurse educator, you will teach, but also engage in lifelong learning. You can't continue to be effective in either role unless you do. So to illustrate what I'm saying here, think about some changes in nursing practice. How might that influence what or how you teach? Pause for a minute and write down some of those changes. Instead of introducing yourselves in the discussion board list section, list a change in nursing practice for the area in which you currently work and how you would teach that content to a group of learners. So pause, think about that, and when you're finished with this presentation and the time is right, go into the discussion board section and include that information. Here are some changes that I thought about. What about you? Were any of your changes similar? It's okay if they weren't. This is my perspective and remember I'm asking you from your, for your perspective. If you haven't already started a library for yourself, I want you to start one now. There are important documents that you should have readily available. I'm sure that you have read or at least heard about the Institute of Medicine's The Future of Nursing Leading Change Advancing Health. This document outlines how nurses' roles, responsibilities, and education should be transformed to meet the shifting healthcare needs of an aging, increasingly diverse population and to respond to the complex evolving healthcare system. There are themes in this quote from the text. And there are themes in everything that you do as a nurse or nurse educator that can be linked back to this. If you don't have a copy, the hyperlink here in this PowerPoint presentation will take you to a site where you can download a copy for your virtual or online library. Of the eight recommendations from this document, all of them have shaped changes in nursing practice and have implications for the way we educate nurses. As those of you who are practicing in healthcare environments, you are well aware that those environments are changing. There are multi multiple external and internal factors at play. The supply and demand for nurses is evolving with some disagreement about the status currently. The educational environment is under additional scrutiny related to the quality and cost of that education and preparations for, of the graduates for employment. There are not enough nurse educators and this affects the ability of schools to enroll new students. A few thoughts about the supply and demand issue. The recession certainly changed the RN workforce melt, meaning that with the recession of beginning in 2008, fewer nurses than anticipated retired or changed positions. This resulted in less positions um, needing to be filled within the environment, but the need for health care continued to increase. The RM workforce demands are projected to rise in some areas 
and workforce shortages exist and are expected to increase also in some areas. The Bureau of Labor Statistics looked at RNs as the largest protected, projected enrollment growth or the large, one of the largest professions expected to experience enrollment group in the time period between 2010 and 2020. There has been much debate and discussion about whether this projected enrollment growth will be realized. More recently, HRSA used the data that it gathered for projections for 2015 growth. They found that the supply and demand for nurses is variable. According to their data, supply is expected to exceed demand growth in 34 states, most of them in the Midwest and Northeast. In other words, we're going to have more of a supply of nurses than we're going to have demand for in these particular regions. Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio are included in the 34 where supply is expected to exceed demands. As an educator and an administrator, this data is important to me and this information is important for me. It has implications for um, many of the decisions that we will be making as an academic organization and I personally will be making as an educator and administrators. And this certainly has implication for all nurse educators, regardless of their setting. One of the things that we will talk a little bit more about as time goes on is what is the right educational preparation for nurses. In the United States, there are still three pathways to entry into practice, diploma, associate degree, or baccalaureate. Because of many factors and um, evidence that supports that more education can result in better outcomes, there is a, a increased uh, momentum to move education for nurses into the baccalaureate as entry into practice. And for those who have diploma or associate degrees to continue their education to um, get a baccalaureate degree in nursing. There are a variety of different master's level graduate programs and there are certainly um, doctoral programs available the traditional PhD, EDD, research-focused um, doctorates are certainly exist and are thriving, but also the new, as of 2005, Doctor of Nursing Practice, which is considered to be the higher, highest level of preparation for nursing practice. Capacity is an issue for academic institutions as it is capacity is an issue for healthcare systems. Um, different meanings to different organizations, but the American Association of Colleges of Nurses, AACN, um, reported in 2011, or gathered data in 2011 rather, that 58,000, more than 58,000 qualified applicants were denied admission to BSN programs. There are multiple factors for this, but one of the factors is certainly the lack of or the shortage of nurse educators. Enrollment is up in graduate programs, both master's programs, DNP programs, and PhD programs in nursing. Changes in, in, in nursing education are both internally and externally um, motivated. Certainly there's a rapidly expanding knowledge base related to, related to providing health care. This challenges practicing nurses to keep up with current best practices at a time when the role of the nurse is expanding. Just as evidence-based practice is an expectation in clinical practice, evidence-based education is an expectation for educators. The challenge for educators is to find such evidence educational research has not kept paces with the changes and is not as readily available as clinical practice um, evidence base. Think about your own educational experiences and those of new nurses you work with or, percept, or perhaps precept. Were you prepared for practice when you entered practice for the first time? Are those new graduates prepared for practice? 
This is the question that Benner and her group sought to answer. And it was, are nurses entering the practice equipped with the knowledge and skills for today's practice and prepared to continue clinical learning for tomorrow's nursing? What they found was yes and no. Patricia Benner is a thought leader in nursing and she's done extensive research and writing about education of nurses. The Carnegie Foundation um, funded her, her most recent work on um, what was happening in nursing and it, saw, it sought to answer that question about preparation of nurses. Um, Benner's work is something that you should have in your library of information if you don't already have it. You can't download this um, book that she wrote, you'd have to purchase it, but I, I strongly recommend that as a nurse educator and a, that you have this um, as part of your library. I didn't require it as a text for this uh, particular course because we're going to use pieces of it and talk about that, but um, you need to have the complete work in your library. Benner has said, the profession of nursing in the United States is at a significant moment. And that is a loaded statement. Um, it's a great opportunity though for all of us as nurse educators to help to move the profession of nursing forward and a great responsibility as well. What Benner and her colleagues found in their research that resulted in educating nurses a call for transformation were these three major findings. And there is substantial, uh, substantive additional information within the text and the link at the bottom of the page links you to a highlights page that gives you some of the highlights. But again, I do urge you to have this as part of your library. The three major outcomes that Benner and her college, colleagues determined from their research was that in United States nursing programs, we are very effective in forming professional identity and ethical comportment. This is consistent with um, the data that comes from the public related to um, nursing being the most trusted of the professions. And her data and her work um, and the work of her colleagues confirmed that um, this is an aspect of what we're doing in preparing nurses um, in which we are succeeding. The second outcome was that clinical practice assignments provide powerful learning experiences, especially in those programs where educators integrate clinical and classroom teaching. And this is a challenge to us as educators. You've just finished your clinical education course. I'm sure you talked about Benner's work and the link between what students learn in the classroom and what they integrate and practice in the clinical environment. And we are charged by her work and the work of others to do a better job with this for our students. In the United States, nursing programs are not generally effective in teaching nursing science, natural sciences, social sciences, technology, and humanities. And this is an area in which we need to devote um, some time and to um, address as educators. It's that scientific foundation um, of our profession that we need to um, focus upon and improve um, what it is that we're doing. So some food for thought. Consider how these three major findings in Benner's study will affect your plans for preparing your teaching learning activities. Um, each of them has, has um, relevance to what you're doing now and for the future, but please take some time to think about how you're going to use what you have learned from Benner's work um, to prepare for your own educational activities. There are lots um, of descriptions of what effective teachers are. Um, this quote from the work of Benner um, talks about what teachers do in the sense that they invite students to develop the sense of salience, clinical reasoning, and clinical imagination necessary to become effective and ethical nurses. So what does that mean to you? How do you create te 
teaching and learning environments that facilitate this. My own research with the dedicated education is examining the outcomes from this new clinical education model. And the preliminary findings are that this model may be more effective than traditional clinical education models for nursing. Benner charges us to look at the development of what's important, that sense of salience, clinical reasoning and clinical imagination necessary. And this is where some of that dissonance between how we're preparing nurses for their first um, practice um, environments um, and the skills that they actually need in those practice environments. This idea of clinical reasoning and clinical imagination to think more globally. And we need to be, continue to examine what kind of educational environments will help our students to best move along that continuum and move along that continuum much more quickly. We need them to an emphasis to be upon acquiring nursing and science knowledge, using clinical reasoning and skilled know-how, and to continue to reinforce ethical com comportment and the formation of, of ethical nurses. Terrazzini and Pascarelli, not nurses, but um, education scientists who have done a great deal of work and research related to um, teaching and learning, describe effective instructor behaviors with these um, words. Think about one of your best teachers, the best teacher you ever had, and why was that person an effective teacher? Did they demonstrate these behaviors? Were there other behaviors that they also demonstrated? What were those behaviors and why were they effective? As I think of one of my own best teachers, I also think about how hard I worked in her classes, that she inspired me to be the nurse, best nurse educator I could possibly be, and she still does. Dr. Gaberson, the author of one of your textbooks, was that teacher. She demonstrated all of these behaviors. I want to take a moment to caution you here, however. The skills and behaviors you learn and demonstrate are important. What is not important or even achievable is that you be Dr. Gaberson or whoever your best teaching example is. You will develop your own style and it is important that you recognize that what you personally bring to the role is unique and important. For example, when I teach my doctoral students about evidence-based practice, I start with the components of evidence-based practice. They include first the evidence, second professional experience and expertise, and third the patient. You don't have evidence-based practice with all, without all of these components. Components. We can adapt those components to evidence-based education. The evidence is the first component. Second is your professional experience and expertise. And third is the learner. The point I'm trying to make here is that you are an essential part of evidence-based teaching. The NLN, which is one of the national organizations, uh, the National League for Nursing, uh, National Professional Organizations for Nursing, has a very strong focus on education, and they have developed core competencies for nurse educators. So in addition to um, the characteristics of effective teachers that I've presented previously, there are competencies that are expectations for nurse, nurse educators that have been defined. They're included here with a link at the bottom of the page to the entire work of the core competencies. And this is also something that you need to have in your library as an educator. I'm not going to go through each one of these bullet points, but rather to highlight a few things that I want to bring to your attention. If you look at the first core competency, it is to facilitate learning. This reflects the shift in education that is focused on is learner focused and the role of the teacher has moved to facilitator. 
It's important to establish the content that you are going to deliver to your students based upon standards and to prepare the lesson focused on facilitating that learning. The second one, learner development and socialization. It's important to consider Benner's research and the research of others about the socialization of nurses. Measurement and evaluation or assessment and evaluation strategies. I can hear a collective groan when you think about, I have to go back to using statistics. You absolutely do and it's important part of the expectations for you as a nurse educator. You need to know that you have reliable and valid measures and you need to develop assessment methods for your learner as well as the course and you'll be doing both of those um, within the contents of this particular course. The rest of those um, categories really relate to your role as an educator and the expectations for curriculum design, being a leader, um, quality improvement, scholarship, and to function within the education environment. So my expectation is that you will download this um, core competency document if you ha don't have it already and use it as part of the materials that you refer to often as you're developing your own um, teaching and learning environments. So one of the things that I recommend to you as a teacher when you're presenting material is that at the end of whatever it is that you're presenting to your audience in whatever way that you're doing, that you focus on the key points. You can call this closure, you can call it key points, you can call it whatever seems appropriate for you and your style. What I talked about in this presentation were the objectives and the link between the objectives for this course and any course and the assignments that are selected. I talked particularly about some of the assignments that were linked to this week's objectives. And it is important that within your lessons, you have that very clear link between your objectives, your assignments, and if it's part of a larger um, educational program, that whatever you're teaching is aligned and linked to that bigger picture. I already I also talked about educator competencies, the descriptions provided by a variety of different authors, including the NLN core competencies for nurse educators, which are the competencies that you should aspire to fulfill. There is a certification exam for nurse educators. It is aligned with these NLN core competencies. It is one that you will be eligible to sit for if you choose to do so when you graduate from this program. And I strongly urge you to take a look at um, the requirements and the benefits to becoming certified as a nurse educator. I look forward to the rest of our time together in this course. There's a lot to do and a lot to learn, and I am here to help you as you move through this course. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I will have information in the Blackboard site about my online um, advising sessions and you certainly can reach out to me in any of the ways that um, you choose, either online, um, text, um, telephone call, to communicate with me throughout this course.